Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. We're back, this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Covering Veeam on, two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. You know, one of the key things that we look at in a company is how fast can they go from R&D to actual product that they can sell to customers. We use events like this to understand that pace of innovation. Uh, John Metzger is here, the Vice President of Product Marketing at Veeam. John, good to see you. Good to see you, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So, lots of announcements. You got the yesterday announcements, you got the today announcements, you got the tomorrow announcements that we won't talk about, but um, to the point that I was making at the open, I mean, you guys have been very busy, rapid fire innovation, going from yes. R&D yeah. out to, to product. So give us the high level on some of the announcements that you've made this week. Yeah, well, I mean, that, so that innovation is something that we, we pride ourselves on, right? In, in terms of being able to deliver uh, functionality to the market very quickly. Um, and, and some of the, we rattled some of them off on main stage earlier, but the customers think of us in terms of driving that innovation. Things like snapshot integration, um, instant VM recovery, uh, the uh, Veeam Cloud Connect, uh, the services that we're delivering as part of those in past announcements. And so with V10 uh, and the wider platform, what we're announcing this week are some, some key innovations around what we call the, that business, always on business continuity and uh, delivering that uh, digital transformation agility. So we, we deliver that in a couple ways in the announcements that we supported earlier today. Uh, so it was things like native object storage support, um, which will allow uh, customers to be able to free up where they're putting, uh, give them more agility and so where they're putting their archives. Uh, today, if they're putting them into that primary storage, through this object storage, we're giving them the ability to uh, store them wherever. It could be less, less cost storage, could be in the cloud, could be wherever they want to put that. So giving, that, giving them some agility there. Um, we're supporting new workloads, which we hadn't supported before. Most customers probably think of us in terms of delivering that um, virtualization backup and recovery mm -hmm. services primarily on-prem. We've been migra we've been moving in towards that multi-cloud environment, which we heard a lot about today for the last several years, but with this announcement, um, today we're doing things like supporting physical servers, uh, endpoints, and those Linux and Windows workloads in the cloud. Yeah. John, can, can yeah. I, th really important point sure. there, because right, most people, I think Veeam, you think, I mean, the, the name of the company, VM is you know, right in the name. Um, customers are figuring out that, that multi-cloud hybrid world, and a key piece is, right, I've got my bare metal physical stuff, whether it's Windows Linux, I've got virtualized yes. environments, I've got cloud. How do I wrap my arms around the management of all those pieces, and maybe you could speak a little to, to how, how Veeam makes sure you get kind of a similar uh, you know, environment, can I just manage manage them all together? You can, yeah, okay. so there's a couple things we announced this week. Yeah. Um, one is in V10, uh, we are going to have that centralized agent management. So that, and when we talk about that, that's both the uh, virtualized machines as well as the agents for Windows and Linux. So uh, whether it's on an endpoint or a server, one console being able to, to manage those um, in, in a single pane of glass, so to speak. Um, uh, but also from, uh, in, we also announced the Veeam Availability Console. So we've actually announced this previously, uh, but what we, what we did announce is that we have our release candidate. Uh, so this is really targeting those service providers. So they can deliver the, the same Veeam hosted services, Veeam Cloud Connect offerings uh, through this Veeam Availability Console. So two, two pieces there that we announced from a management standpoint, because we're hearing from our customers, obviously, they're looking for and Veeam's known for this, that simplified, easy to use um, solutions, and that, that centralized management is, is critical to that. Okay, and then back to you know, the other announcement that really has caught a lot of attention is the CDP piece. Yes, yeah. So let's spend some time on that. Understand yeah. that a little bit better. So, th so this is something that we uh, we positioned ourselves as saying we deliver uh, we availability for any application and data for 15 minutes or less, and that's really based off of that backup and recovery. Instant VM recovery is one where we can even say you know within seconds or minutes. But what we're looking to do here is for those most critical workloads, right? those those tier one applications. Uh, it could be website, it could be point of sale application, whatever it is. But those most important applications to be able to deliver that RPOs of seconds, right? And in, in the demo we gave earlier, you saw the default is 15 seconds, can go even lower, but we're looking to drive um, that uh, RPOs with replication very quickly to drive, to deliver that um, a, a solution in the market in addition to our backup and recovery, now that high speed replication that is competing with um, uh, delivering solutions that other legacy vendors aren't. Well, okay, so let's talk about this yep. for a second. So one of the problems in the world of data protection has always been 
it's kind of a one size fits all. You don't have the ability to say, okay, these apps, they don't need as much protection as these, and yeah. I don't have the granularity and, and the ability, because it's too complex and it's too expensive to say, okay, put this level of data protection on this, these workloads and, and, and tighten it up for these. And the concepts generally used are RPO and RTO. RPO is recovery point objective, which is essentially how much data you're going to lose. So yes. if you're taking snapshots in 15 minute increments, you have the you potential to lose that, that data that's not snapped. Okay, fine. And then RTO is the speed of recovery, right? Okay, yes. so those are yes. sort of the basics, the really basics. So you're announcing the ability to have very granular levels of RPO, right? Correct. And, and yep. you're doing that if I understand it correctly, through the vSphere API for IO filtering. Exactly. That's a key yes. ingredient and enabler for you yeah, guys. Okay, absolutely, so. right, because this, we're leveraging that API for us to be able to deliver uh, in a way that's supported fully by VMware. Right? Uh, be able to get access to the information data that, that enables us to deliver that faster. And many of, our, uh, many of the others in the space aren't leveraging that same uh, API, and so that gives us opportunities to differentiate and show, show uh, uh, results for our All right, so we got to ask you the elephant yep. in the room question. We've been asking this question of CEOs at NetApp and, and, and Dell prior to them buying you know, VMware for years, which is you got VMware, which uh, is owned by Dell, and obviously yeah. EMC is part of that, EMC is a competitor. Um, do you get the same treatment, right, as a as a VMware partner, as say, you know, the insiders at Dell EMC? How do you answer that question when customers ask you? Yeah, well, so if, if, good question, and, and it's one that w in the past has been uh, has been a concern. But I've, more and more, we we actually had Sanjay on stage today, uh, had similar sort of level of folks on stage at the previous VMons. We have a very good relationship with VMware. Um, we actually share uh, where we're headed in particular areas and obviously have uh, access to their API in this case for, for replication. So we, we are building that relationship. We've actually done um, some research with VMware to show the value that Veeam brings to VMware in terms of driving more and more virtualization uh, with, with the environment. So we, some research we did with IDC, for example, showed that while we may not, Veeam may not drive that initial purchase of VMware, we're driving higher adoption of VMware. So VMware sees that, we have that relationship with them, and we're there. We're very open to driving those those joint go-to-market opportunities, and that's why you you end up with a, a so Sanjay you, in, in you, such a Just one one quick thing. So yep. the CDP that uh, you know snapshotless environment uses the APIs. Does that mean that it's only for VMware environments today, or you know, yes. is there is there any discussion of kind of future, you know, how CDP goes beyond? Definitely just for VMware. future opportunities, yeah. but for today, this release that we're talking about with V10 is is VMware. Yep. And so the yep. key is that you you get the SDK and you then you do the integration and all the testing and and that that's it's kind of a heavy lift yes. is it not yes okay yes. and and so, um, what's the? Can you give us the timeline as to when we can actually see this product in the field? And yeah. So we're, we're, we're with V10, all the announcements that we made with Veeam Availability Suite ver version 10, we're targeting in, in by end of year to okay. have version 10 out in the market. Oh, excellent. Okay. okay. And then, the other thing that you guys announced is some integrations. We well, mentioned three companies: uh, Lenovo, IBM, and, and Infinidat, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Yeah. An emerging right. array company, you know, started by Moshe and I. Um, and talk about those integrations and exactly what they are. Well, so we, and this builds on some of the additional, the current integrations that we have in the market. Um, so we, we've done integration with vendors such as HPE, um, EMC, Dell, Dell EMC, uh, NetApp, and Cisco. And so we've done it in a couple key areas. One is integration with their snapshots uh, for backup, for recovery, and uh, some efficiencies that we're doing with dedupe and other other pieces. Uh, so what we're doing here with these, with Lenovo, IBM, and um, uh, Infinidat, is that we're doing that same level of integration. So through the API, they're able to develop um, backup from storage snapshots, recovery from storage snapshots, functionality that we've developed with the other vendors, and supporting those through throughout these. So these are space-efficient snapshots, and the, and, and the key is you're get, getting application consistency and Absolutely. that whole life cycle. Yes, of, of yeah, and, dri and driving the benefit for the, the end user is there seeing better RPOs, better RTOs, uh, faster backups as a result by leveraging the, that, that integration. All right, so, so John, we talked a bunch about VMware and the relationship there. Uh, one of the other announcements was the uh, Veeam availability for AWS. Yes. How much of that is customers coming to Veeam asking for it? Is there, you know, how is the partnership with Amazon themselves? You know, what, what can you share about yeah, that? Yeah, and so we, we made actually a couple announcements relative to, to integrations with um, third party vendors to help get more to, yep. to Amazon. So definitely a need, right? Yeah, no doubt Amazon's the leader in the public cloud space. We have a lot of customers that are uh, that have workloads in the cloud and are looking for us to help them 
develop, deliver that availability solution through, for those workloads. Um, so in addition to the partnerships, which you'll hear more about tomorrow with Azure, AWS is definitely a key focus for us. Um, so this, this AWS, availability for AWS is one of our, um, while we can do um, agent backup and recovery uh, with, our with our Windows and Linux agents, this is giving us an agentless solution within AWS to help mitigate that risk of lost data. So it's definitely an interest, uh, a key focus of us. Uh, we also announced uh, through Starwinds uh, leveraging AWS for um, for virtual tape libraries. We talked about object storage, which we're now able to leverage um, several Amazon properties for that. So we're looking to deliver more um, uh, support for Amazon in terms of and other public clouds in terms of that that greater availability. So let's store. talk use cases a little bit. Yeah. So you got I get the four that I wanted to sort of talk mm -hmm. about, and then maybe even some others. So obviously on prem data protection, you mm -hmm. guys have been doing that for a while. Then you got on prem going up to the to the cloud, is, and that's something I think you guys support. Cloud, coming back on-prem, yes. and then cloud to cloud. Yes. Are those sort of four viable use cases that your customers are pushing you, you to def deliver? Definitely, and, and you, you summed, summarized it very well. I think okay. will, um, uh, those are sort of the four use cases that we, we are building. Uh, so whether that cloud is public, managed, or private, we're looking to manage, to be able to work, get workloads to wherever they need to be across those clouds, whether it's from prem to cloud, cloud down to prem, across cloud. Uh, so definite use cases that we're hearing from customers. Um, they, they want that flexibility to, to be able to get the workloads to wherever they, they feel they need them. IT is being asked to, to, to deliver against several of those use cases and how can I, as an IT manager, deliver against whatever's best for that person at the line of business or that, that CEO or whatever we're trying to achieve for the business, give me that, that agility, that flexibility to be able to do and that. And then beyond those four, are there, is there an affinity, I mean, there's obviously an affinity to DevOps if I can integrate my, my data protection strategy and schema directly into my build and my deploy, yeah. that's going to give me more agility, but can you talk about the DevOps use case and you know, put some sort of meat on that bone? Yeah, it, well, so um, in terms of what they're, they're looking for yes. from, from a solution. So there's, uh, we, we actually look at it from a couple different perspectives, right? So we talked about DevOps, uh, we've talked about that the IT manager. We, we also look at it from the line of business perspective. So that, that agility goes to various folks within, within the organization. Because we, we know more and more, particularly in the cloud scenario, um, that you might have somebody who has very little DevOps background or IT background, and they're looking, they know they've got a problem they need to solve, and they think that public cloud or, or some solution is the best way to go. And IT then is, is there, DevOps is there to try to understand um, what their real needs are and how I can help solve those solve those concerns. So we're trying to give them that flexibility mm -hmm. to, to 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 manage those uh, the requirements based off of what the customer's asking for. Excellent. So what's the reaction been to the to the announcements? What have been people you know what what, what have they been asking you? What kind of questions? Enthusiasm? Yeah, it was well, interesting. So we you, we made the announcements this morning. Uh, I think the press release is about to hit the wire here very soon, if it hasn't already. Okay. Um, we did some some pre briefing of them, and we're seeing. I, I would say Veeam CDP definitely is is a lot of interest there. Uh, it was uh, we are physical server support is one that um, it, while we traditionally have not delivered that, as you know, right. uh, it's an area that obviously customers have physical servers, they have endpoints, uh, and in some of the reaction that we've seen on Twitter and elsewhere is. Finally, Veeam's delivering that. Now we, we focus on being best, best of breed of what we've been doing for eight years, but now in the last couple of years, and able to deliver that, that full coverage of wherever those workloads would be, we recognize that that's an area we, we need to go. Um, so seeing, I, I would say those are some key interests. And then of course the AWS announcement that we talked about uh, is, is driving a lot of interest as well. Right. So uh, good reaction so far. I, I'm thrilled yeah. to see the, the feedback. All right, John, well listen, yep. thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to see you. We Thank really you. appreciate thanks the rundown. Me. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Veeam On in New Orleans. We'll be right back.